Okay, we're uh, doing this video on how to set up video motion so that you only record on motion detection. So I'm going to my NVR, uh, which is the Panasonic WJMD 400 in this case, um, but it works the same on all of our NVRs with our cameras. So we're going to go into setup and the first thing we want to do at the actual recorder is we want to go to event and you'll see site alarm at the at the site alarm we want to have this turned on so we're telling the recorder right now to accept these alarms that come in uh, from the camera and here we've got the port number which is 1818 uh, we'll see that's on the camera as well. You can change this port, uh, but you can leave it at the default as well. And we'll come down and hit set. So now we're telling the recorder to accept these alarms that will be coming from the camera. Now under the schedule, which is the next place we want to go, we'll see here that we're just using one scheduled program. So program one is the TAN program. We're using it daily, uh, every single day, and it's going 24 hours. You can see as the time across the top that uh, this is the program that we're using at this point. So the first thing that I want to do uh, is look at the actual daily or the time that's been set up. Because we can turn this uh, alarm protocol off at different times of the day if we don't want to accept these alarms. So here I've got program number one that's running 24 hours. I'm going to come over and I want to make sure that my Panasonic alarm protocol is turned on because I do want to accept the alarms that are coming in uh, from this camera. The first thing I do too, uh, this will be turned on, but I'll turn this alarm message off because if you leave that on, you're going to get a alarm message from the camera, every camera that sees motion. It's going to pop up uh, on the screen and tell you that it just saw motion, which you can imagine if you have multiple cameras seeing motion, that can get uh, quite annoying. But you can turn that on and off by time and date as well uh, if you needed that to pop up at night or at some other time. So we're going to hit set here, and now uh, we're accepting these Panasonic alarm protocol uh, that's coming in. Now here, you could do this after. Uh, I'm going to do it since we're already here. I'm going to go into the program. Uh, I use program one all the time uh, on this recording, so it was 24 hours. So that's the program I'm going to go in and look at. So this is the camera we're going to set up, which is camera number three. So you'll see on camera number three, I have the live video to all. I do want to see all of the images coming from it uh, in its live mode. I don't have any audio on live. Uh, my manual record is off. My scheduled record is off because uh, this one I'm only going to record on motion. You can see these up top are on uh, scheduled times uh, for recording. So now I get into, if we read up top here, you see pre-event, post-event, and this is all the event record area. So the first thing it asks me is, well, what rate or how many frames per second do you want to shoot uh, when you see this alarm pre-event or pre the actual alarm? In this case, I'm using JPEG, so it allows me to choose anywhere from 1 to 15 images per second. If you had it on MPEG recording or on H.264, that would come up and say either all or iframes. Remember, your iframes are the JPEGs that get changed uh, in MPEG or H.264. So you start with a interval frame, and then it looks for the changes, and that's what it sends down. So you can just record those iframes, uh, but most of the time you're going to record you're going to choose all if you're doing uh, MPEG or H.264. So here I've chosen 15 images per second and I've told it I want 10 seconds of recording prior to the alarm going off. Um, so the alarm goes off, I'm going back in time 10 seconds. 
This can be set from anywhere from 2 seconds to 15 minutes. Usually you're going to keep this on a shorter time, but people always ask, well, why would you be up into 3, 5, or 10 minutes? If you had a, a field and, and then in front of it was, let's say, your parking lot, and you had your motion in your parking lot because you don't have a lot of trees and that's, you know, that are swaying around. But if somebody set off that motion, you wanted to see if they were coming from the field, then you could set this back so that you could see prior to when the alarm went off and where that person uh, was coming from. So that's the use on that side. If we look here at post event, now I choose my rate again. So uh, again, I'm going to choose on this one. I'm going to choose all, which is real time. I'm shooting 30 images per second out of the camera, so I'm going to capture all of that. Uh, again, we would choose the images per second, or if it was MPEG or J, MPEG or H.264, it would be all or the iframes. So after that, then it asks for your duration after the time. So after motion is done, after the camera stops seeing motion. How long do you want it to record after the fact? I have this set to 10 seconds. Uh, the reason this goes all the way up to uh, 15 minutes, all the way to manual and continue, is I, I've never I never use manual or continue, but you can extend these times out if somebody walks out of the frame and then you have enough motion where you think they're going to come right back in. So you have this situation where you set up motion, but people walk past and then you know they're coming right back. Instead of creating index after index after index um, of this person who constantly sets off motion, that way when they leave and they come back, it would just keep it all under one index. So you're not opening multiple indexes to the drive or defragmenting the drive. So now we have this set. And then uh, my audio record is off, and I don't have an SD card, so I have that off as well. I'm going to hit set here, and then we're going to close this. So now the now we're set up in the recorder. The recorder is accepting alarms, and we've told it to record 10 seconds before and after the event. Uh, with no audio. So here we're going to go now to the camera because we have to actually tell the camera to send us that motion detection alarm. So I'm going to go to camera number three, which is the one we set up in our schedule. So now I'm at the actual menu of the camera. So now I'm going to go into the setup menu of the camera. One, two, three, four, five. And we hit OK. Now in here, we want to go to Alarm Setup. So we're going to click on Alarm Setup. And the first thing I want to do is turn on the VMD alarm. So I'm going to turn that on, and then I'm going to hit Set. Then I want to go to my VMD area. I'm going to click on my Video Motion Detection area. And you can see this was on the front page as well. This is a little teeny alarm that shows motion. That's why we set in here that I wanted this VMD alarm uh, because this is a good way to troubleshoot your motion. So we can see the image now here and I'm going to delete the box that I made. You'll see I'm able to draw four different boxes any size I want on the screen. I'm going to delete these or I can just choose all area and then I can come down I've got it set to middle detection and hit set so now I can see this uh, area as it comes across here now obviously this tree is blowing around and everything which is going to set off constant motion so I'm going to actually uh, delete that and put the square back that I had which is, again, why I'm jumping to 10 seconds before and after as well.
Now we have a delay because we're doing setup and all of that, but you can see that car went by and actually triggered an alarm on that motion. So again, you can use that uh, to your advantage if you need to set and see how your motion is, uh, is set up and how well it's working. So now that's good. So we're going to hit set here. VMD information added we want off. Remember that's metadata if you see the other video. So we don't want both of these working at the same time. So now we have this alarm set up. Now we have to tell this alarm where to go. So I'm going to notification and the first thing I want to turn on is the actual Panasonic alarm protocol. So I'm turning that on and I'm going to hit set and you'll see that that brings open the 1818 same port that we had on accepting those alarms coming in now I need to send this alarm off to the the actual recorder so here under the alarm uh, I'm gonna click the alarm on and then I'm gonna type in the IP address of the actual recorder which in this case is 192.168.0.250 which is the camera port side so I'm gonna hit set and I'll show you uh, where that's at. So now motion is set. So let's go back to the recorder. I'll just show you where that camera IP site is because obviously you have to send the alarms uh, to the right IP address. So if I look under network here, you can see my camera port is set at 192.168.0.250. So now this is recording motion detection. You'll see that same alarm up here which you're always going to have this up here uh, in my case I only have the one camera connected to it so we could clear that and actually watch the alarm come in uh, if you have multiple cameras that alarm is always going to be up there for you so here is the NW484 and now it's set for uh, the motion only which we've been recording this on motion only and this helps you get to things a lot faster. So if we were to hit play, uh, we have no other records in here except for those motion records. So as we scan through previous records, uh, we can see that basically we're just capturing cars that come by and set up this motion and set off this motion.